Greetings in Christ, friends. This reflection is for the sweet 16th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Now, if you were to ask every single Catholic that is out there, you ask them what their favorite psalm is, I can guarantee you a majority would say Psalm 23, which reads, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Commonly heard during funerals, too. And, of course, you know, the psalmist, which of course was David, knew full well and laid down the work what a shepherd should do. Now, as we look at the gospel, which probably say one of the most, most popular I am statements from Jesus. Now, how often do we ask people, who are you? Or, or how often when we are asked that question, we respond, I am such and such. I am the Catholic Philadelphian. There's that. But I think if there's something we have to understand is that when we look at this passage is that Jesus refers to him as a good shepherd. Indeed, he did act like one when he was doing his ministry. I know it, it, it may have been short-lived for three years, but it was worth it for him because he knew full well what God had in mind for him. Today, our clergy, our church, is under attack. Why? Why is it under attack? It's because Satan has had an influence in our culture. It has basically had a good grip on it. Why is that? Well, I hate to admit this. I may get canceled. I don't care. But I think the Catholic clergy were not vocal in the direction our country was going, let alone the church. Now, I'm not going to necessarily point fingers at anybody, but if there's a clergy, if there's a priest, bishop, archbishop, cardinal, monsignor, a representative from the Vatican that listens to this video, guess what? We have a crisis on our hand, and we need you to be more vocal. We need you to lay down your life for your flock. We need you to go with the 99 to find that one sheep that has wandered off. Even if you have to take a bullet for that sheep in order to survive. Recently, I have gone to a an ordination mass. And it's one of the most powerful events you could ever experience. Regardless of how many in the ordination class, it is extraordinary. These men, which I have to say, like my favorite part of the of this priestly ordination is when during the the litany of s supplementation, you would see them Kind of like this. They lay prostrate along the altar. There is a significance to that. Because they are called to lay down their lives. Is a sacrament of service? Just like matrimony. But for holy orders, it's something greater. Because you see, priests, you may not realize this, but day in and day out, they have to make a lot of sacrifice. Maybe they had something going on and they get a call like someone's about to die and they need their last rites. How often would a priest drop everything, get to that hospital, make sure that this person was purified on their road to heaven? How often would a priest stop everything to listen to someone who is going through a very hard time. How often would a priest maybe sacrifice an additional few minutes to make sure everyone confessed their sins before they received Jesus in the most precious body and blood during Mass? How often would a priest take time out of their schedule to lead his flock in praying outside of abortion facilities? How often would a priest lay down 
his life. Now, not necessarily like, you know, taking a bullet, but I mean, being that father-like figure that stops Satan from creeping in when the church is vulnerable. I say to the clergy, those that have been mocked, chastised, canceled for the truth, your reward will be heaven. Mark my words. Those of you that have been shady, those of you that have not lived up to your priestly vows, it's time to take a darn good look at yourself. If you've been a priest that promoted sin, say the sin of sodomy, the sin of pride, why did you become a priest? It is time like these, the faithful must hold not only the priests accountable, but we also must pray for them. And let's face it, I don't think the priests are in for a thank, like they're in for, let's face it, they're in for a thankless job, no matter what. They need our prayers. And friends, I ask you to please join, join me in praying for them. You may know a priest personally. It may be your son. It may be a nephew. It may be a cousin. It may be somebody you went to high school with or college. Whatever. They need our prayers. St. Teresa of Avila reminds us that Satan always prays on a priest when they fall. But what keeps that priest going is the prayers of the faithful. To priests, thank you for your service. To those in formation, if God is calling you to this great sac this sacrament of service, keep going. Those of you discerning, hear that call. At the time of this video, I know there's 50 some thousand people that are in Indianapolis for the National Eucharistic Congress. And I sure hope that those of you who are discerning will experience that call to the priesthood. So friends, remember, Jesus set the standard of what the Good Shepherd is. Into my pre into priests, especially those I know closely, and bishops, know my prayers for you. God bless.